Hi everyone, um, I'm Erin Carlson and I'm excited to be in this class. Um, I think it's a really interesting topic and one that I'm passionate about and so I'm just really excited to go through this course with all of you. Um, the quote from the text I, I think um, did resonate with me and, and did make sense. Um, you know, as we think about economic innovation, certainly being tied to financial profits and benefits and you are competing with others in industry um, to to make those profits, right? That's, that's you know, um, obviously uh, getting consumers, obtaining consumers and selling products uh, is a competition with others in industry. Um, you're not typically, you know, the only one doing that. You might be the, the, the primary uh, market share for your industry, but you're still competing with others. And so from that perspective, like it's easy to see how economic innovation can be tied to competition. Um, and then the author is talking about, you know, social change uh, being or social innovation being where people want to see a change. Something is happening that they perceive to be unjust um, or, you know, there's there's something um, that we need to change in order to make a bigger impact in the world, um, whether we think about it, the environment or um, the way that people are treated, um, human rights, you know, those things are all um, social uh, fall under that social innovation and, and social change. And, and typically you're rallying people around these ideas, right? They, they feel similarly to, to you. And so therefore you see a lot more of that cooperation, um, where people are coming together to try to make something happen. Um, so I do think, you know, the logic that they point out around, um, you know, it, that, social innovation aims to improve the relations of society. Um, I, I believe that that's true. Uh, the part where they talk about economic innovation seek only to maintain ties with their shareholders. Um, so I definitely could get that perspective. Um, I do think that we see more and more um, businesses that are adopting uh, social platforms, right? They're They're thinking about um, what's important to my consumer, um, which ultimately is going to be important to my shareholder. So I get the tie that the author is talking about, um, but I do think that we're seeing a lot more um, where we have a better understanding now that many consumers shop with their values. Um, they are making choices about what they buy, who they buy things from, um, as they understand more about the companies that align and do things that, that align with their own personal values, right? So for me, for example, um, <clears throat> I think about, you know, if I'm going to um, buy food from a company, I want to know that that company is using um, their some of their profits or their excess food or materials that would otherwise be wasted to help with food insecurity. Um, so that seems like just a no brainer if you're a food company and you have those resources that you would have the access to do that, uh, but not all food companies do, right? And so because food insecurity is important to me, um, then I want to be able to make that connection. So if I'm in the soup aisle and I'm thinking about, you know, what type of organic soup I wanna buy, then, you know, I'm probably gonna choose um, Pacific Foods, because I know that they are um, fighting food insecurity in my own backyard, right? So that's just an example. Um, but I, I think that a lot of consumers think that way, and we see that more and more. So they want to know what companies stand for. Um, they want to understand, you know, what, where are you, where are your views and what's important to you? Um, and then they want to tie themselves to that. Uh, so as that consumer behavior, as that, as those details about companies that used to maybe not be well known, right? It, we have these huge companies, um, like Philip Morris or, um, or Campbell's, um, General Mills, where they own all of these brands. They own way more than you would ever really imagine or think. You start digging into it and you can see, oh, I didn't even know, you know, that all of these brands were made by the same company. But as people have more of that information available and as they start digging a little bit more, then they are able to get more information about these parent companies and these businesses, these umbrellas that own all of these um, smaller brands, right? Or these businesses and what how are they impacting societal change? Um, these are the big 
big businesses that have the resources to do that. So I think that people want to see how they're doing that. And so, so businesses are being forced almost to come out and, and, um, you know, be more active in that space. But I also think like the best businesses recognize that they do that because it drives, you know, it makes consumers happy. It potentially drives sales and profits. Um, but it also attracts people to work there, right? It's, it um, creates an environment where people want to be and people want to work at places that, you know, have the same values that they do. So I do think that it's multifaceted and that businesses are realizing that now. And it's not just, um, it's not just a focus on economic change to drive profits. It's also a focus on societal um, change and innovation. So, and social um, innovation, as the book talks about it, just to, to be able to improve their businesses overall. Um, and that might not just mean profits. It's also from like a talent perspective and, and the standing in their communities, right? Those, which all of those things probably do, you know, they do go to the bottom line, sure. Um, but I would like to think that some of those you know, some of the decisions that are made are made because we're all people and these things are important to us and we know they'll be important to others. Um, so anyways, um, I do think that, you know, the American culture values competition, yes. Um, and I do think that's a lot of the reason why we can't, you know, resolve issues um, that we should be able to. And um, it's just hard to come together when we have so many differences that are tearing us apart all the time. And I think people tend to focus on things that, you know, are, are maybe unimportant in the scheme of things, but um, we're so, the country, our country is so divided and, and has been, you know, for the last, I'm probably close to a, a decade now, as I really think about what it used to be when I was younger and how my parents experienced um, political divides or social divides comparative to what I, I experience now. And I'm sure that, you know, there's always been this component of it for sure for every generation feels this way likely. Um, but, you know, I do think that with the more and more access that we have to information and more importantly, misinformation, um, I think continues to drive that wedge deeper and deeper uh, in our country and, and likely around the world as well. Um, so anyways, um, sorry for the long first video. I'm going to get better at this. Um, and I hope you all have a really great week. Thanks so much.